This is part 12 in our series of lectures on section 1.6, and in this lecture we introduce a new working definition, namely that a sequence diverges to infinity. So let's start with an infinite sequence of real numbers. Intuitively, we would like to say that the sequence diverges to infinity if when we look far enough out in the sequence, the terms not only become arbitrarily large, but they remain arbitrarily large. How do we measure the fact that the terms of the sequence are getting arbitrarily large? Well, we do that by giving ourselves um, a real number m, which we think of as being fairly large, and we prove that from some point on in the sequence, all of the terms of the sequence are bigger than that number m. And if we're able to do that, no matter which capital M we're given, then we would like to be able to say that the sequence diverges to infinity. And so that's expressed in a precise way by means of this working definition. It says that for every real number capital M, there exists a natural number big N, such that for all natural numbers little n, if, n, if little n is bigger than or equal to capital N, then a sub n is bigger than or equal to capital M. So now let's illustrate this by an example. Uh, take the sequence whose nth term is 5n squared minus 1,000. Uh, intuitively, I think you'll agree that this is a sequence which seems to diverge to infinity, but I want you to write down in symbols uh, the precise meaning of that. So put your video on hold and uh, write it out in symbols, and be very specific with this particular sequence. So I just simply wrote down the previous working definition um, with this particular sequence. Um, so it's for every real number capital M, there exists a natural number capital N, such that for every natural number little n, if little n is bigger than or equal to capital N, then 5n squared minus 1,000 is bigger than or equal to capital M. And so finally, I'd like you to write a proof uh, that the sequence diverges to infinity, and that means you have to write a formal proof of this statement here. So what we have to do is the following. Given any real number capital M, we have to explain how to choose this capital N, this natural number, so that for all terms in the sequence after the capital N term, this inequality occurs. So let's calculate that quantity, 5n squared minus 1,000, and see what it takes to make that big. This is certainly going to be bigger than 5n squared minus 1,000. And um, we'd like to simplify that a little bit so that it makes it easy to calculate capital N. So the question is, is that bigger than um, just plain N squared? Okay, so what does it take to make that happen? Is that bigger than N squared? That's the question. And so if you just bring this N squared across and the 1,000 over, it just says that 4N squared is bigger than 1,000 which says that n squared is bigger than 250, which says that n is bigger than the square root of 250. So that's something that we want to arrange to happen. So this we want. Now, once we have that, then we have the right to say that this is bigger than this, and now we're in a position to ask for this to be bigger than or equal to m, and what, is it, what does it take for that to happen? Well, n would just have to be bigger than square root of m. So that's also something that we want. So once we have these two things, this one and this one, then the inequality goes right through and we're able to get exactly what we want. So all we have to do is choose our capital N so that both of those things happen. And the simplest way that I can think to do that is to just simply choose 
capital N, to be bigger than the maximum of those two numbers, the maximum of root 250 and root M. So in that way, um, both of those inequalities will be true, and we can make everything work from there. Okay, so now go back and see if you can make this proof work. And when it comes, comes time to choose the capital N, just do that. Put your video on pause and try to write up the proof. Okay, here's the proof. Follow along here as I read what I've written. The first sentence should be, let M be a real number. And now, choose capital N, choose a natural number, capital N, such that N is bigger than the maximum of root 250 and root M. That's the calculation that we did on the previous page. Then we see here that we should next write, let little n be a natural number. And then we're giving a direct proof, so we should assume our hypothesis. Suppose that n is bigger than or equal to capital N. Now we have to prove that this happens. And in order to smooth the way in writing the proof, I'm going to first make two observations. Since n is bigger than root 250, it follows that this happens. And since n is bigger than root m, it follows that this happens. Thus we have, and now I'm just simply going to write the proof of this, I start on the left side, 5n squared minus 1000 is bigger than this, because uh, little n is bigger than capital N, and this is bigger than this, as I observed up here, and this is bigger than this, as I observed up here, and that completes the proof. Just one final comment that um, this condition on my capital N isn't the only one that you could have come up with. There are other ways to do it. Um, this is just one possible way.